Hey there, welcome to the REI Conversion Podcast, where each episode we discuss strategies and digital tools to help you launch, automate, and scale your real estate investing business. Learn how to run your investing business remotely, find out ways to automate your business to better utilize your time, and learn what other successful investors are implementing so you can get to the next step closer to your investing goals. And I'm your host and founder of REI Conversion, Jesse Kwong. Hey, how's it going? This is Jesse here at REI Conversion. Today, I've got a guest, not a regular guest, but a guest all the way in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, as m- you may all already know, uh, from the title of this podcast, we are speaking to someone who runs his land investing business out of the country. We'll talk to him about what it's like to run an investing business completely virtually and the challenges and struggles um, and, and even the positive sides that come with that as well. Um, And that's the beauty of running a digital virtual business. You can literally do it from anywhere with an internet connection. But before we get to that, um, I just want to let you know that this show is brought to you by REI Conversion. So if you don't already know, uh, here at REI Conversion, we help you launch your flipping and wholesaling website to drive more motivated seller leads and to build your buyer's list. Uh, These are beautifully designed websites that are powerful, strategic, and flexible, really. Not only um, only that, but they'll help you scale a portion of your business. Now, because our sites are built on WordPress, we uh, we have the power and flexibility to do a lot of creative things. We know that um, everyone runs their business slightly different, and that's the beauty of WordPress. Like an iPhone or an Android phone, you're able to download different third-party apps, which make your phone uh, different and unique. And that's what we call plugins inside of WordPress. So if you ever see any other fancy site, a huge chance that they are running on WordPress. And the beauty of WordPress, again, is the ability to download these plugins that will allow you to do all sorts of things from um, having live chat pop-ups, um, including countdown timers uh, on your properties if, if you're running a sale or um, running you know, deep analytics of, of where your traffic is actually coming from. So you have a better understanding of how to do your marketing. Uh, you need to drive leads and you need to build trust to make those cash offers. You need to grow your buyers list. If you're looking to migrate your site or launch your real estate investing site, simply head over to reiconversion.com. Feel free to go to the top menu, hit the book, a book tour button there. Uh, and that goes directly with me and let me know uh, where you are in your real estate investing journey. And I'll also be answering questions you may have. So uh, go ahead and pause the show, head over to reiconversion.com and simply just hit the book tour and find a date and time that works for you. Okay, let's get started here. Today, I have Sven Storing on the show with me. Sven, how's it going today? Excellent. I'm, I'm very well. How about you? I am doing great. Um, thanks again for joining us on this show. You're all the way out in Germany, Stuttgart, Germany. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get uh, into investing? Yes, actually, um, I was investing in uh, real estate for quite some while. Actually, I started in uh, 2016. I mean, relatively late also, I, I need to admit. But uh, anyhow, I, I own uh, some um, rentals <clears throat> in here in Germany. And, um, but, but the land investing, really, I started um, in 2018, early in 2018, by... Um, Purchasing um, the, 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 the land investing course from Jack Bosch um, and started that one. I built up the, these the systems, how to do it, uh, especially from abroad. Um, took my time, did that in, over the course of 2018 yeah. and then bought my first property between Christmas and New Year's um, and, um, and then sold it um, almost a little bit more than one year ago, uh, yeah, in, in March um, 2019. It was a little bit earlier. It was like February, I, I guess, yeah? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then um, I joined an, 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 another program that is uh, a group coaching training by the Land Geek called uh, Flight School. And, and that one, um, yeah, really... Um, had a, a slightly different uh, approach, uh, but uh, has given me uh, a boost, I would say. And uh, in 2000, 2019, really, um, I made one deal after the other. So um, right now I have like uh, 14 properties uh, bought and sold. Um, 
all of them on terms, meaning this uh, seller financing. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, that it's uh, it's it's doing uh, so far um, kind of like a like a routine. So it's it's doing great. That's great. Um, and you're again, you're doing this all the way out out of the country. Um, and uh, have you ha ever had to travel over to the United States to to? No, do actually not. I mean, I had a slightly a slight um, let's say advantage in the beginning because um, <clears throat> I do have a social security number because I was once uh, like like twelve years ago I was deployed for seven months to the U.S. Uh, because I'm an engineer and uh, there, there was a project to do there. Um, from that time, I still have also a bank account, so a private bank account. Um, so I could start with that one. Uh, now I have formed a company this year and a business bank account. But um, things have developed uh, advantages for, uh, for, for us uh, doing this from abroad in a sense that we don't need to travel or to show in person necessarily anymore for opening a bank account. So <clears throat> um, there is even one bank out of San Francisco right now um, who is accepting uh, foreigners uh, with their international passport, with no SSN, with nothing else. Um, and it is completely online. It is, um, it's perfect. So we, I could just sign up uh, this, uh, bank, this business bank account and also I formed a company um, that was the easy part and, and incorporated. And, um, but even before that, I mean, I, I did like, I, I, I don't know, 10 deals um, on, on, under my personal name. Yeah, that's yeah. also possible to, to get started. And so um, it's really for, for those who want to start this thing, they don't need to worry much about. Um, as a company, business cards, logo, and and stuff. Web website, even not. I mean, I, I know you are selling your website. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. But even that, I mean, to this date, I need to say I, I don't have a website. Yeah. Let's see uh, <laughs> what we what we can do. But um, uh, even even that uh, is, is not strictly necessary. Yeah, absolutely. You can you can definitely start uh, with the bare minimum and. Uh, a lot of us started out in that way. And I want to ask you a little bit um, about the bank account uh, can, or the bank that you're working with that you just mentioned out in San Francisco that is willing to take in uh, foreigners. Do you know what that is? And I'll include that in the show notes for those who are listening and, and are maybe interested. Yeah, sure. That's Mercury. Uh, Mercury.co is... Okay. So, oh. uh, I mean, the best, the best thing of it's, it's even free. Okay. And you get a credit card, you get everything. Uh, so it's, wow. it's very convenient. Okay. So I'll include that in the show notes. That's mercury.co. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that with us. Now, um, what, what would you say is the most, you know, we'll, we'll jump right into those. What is the most challenging thing when you're working away from, uh, from in, in Germany uh, and, and, you know, working away from the country you're actually mm -hmm. investing in? I would say to this date, it is clearly the um, notarizing and signing over deeds to end buyers, for example. Okay. Uh, or if I need to do a power of attorney or anything that require two witnesses, because I'm active in Florida. Okay. Yeah. So in the, on the buy side, everything is easy. Um, then the seller has this problem. But the seller is normally in the US. The seller can just go to a UPS store or wherever and find everywhere um, somebody to co-sign and so. But, um, but for me, it's, it's uh, more difficult because I'm, I mean, I have been using successfully the um, notary cam service. Okay. They do this for international. I mean, for US, I think it's $25. For international, it's $75. But um, most of the time, um, it was kind of hard to to get them going yeah right right they, they have questions and and uh, i have not I, I didn't have a single appointment that started on time with them <laughs> yeah? we, we, every time we made it somehow but the problem is when i get like students or other 
assistants here in order to be witness for me. I book them or I, I, I invite them for a certain hour. Yeah. And then, and then uh, they, 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 this is delayed by some hours. This is not practical. So I, I need to find a solution still for that. I did not have really the, the problem because um, all, all these properties are still in my name or in my company's name. Yeah. Yeah. But when, when it comes to my two, two three years uh, from now, then they will be paid off and then I need to sign over one after the other. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. I mean, I'm relatively relaxed because, um, I mean, this whole um, notarizing and, and e online signing and e notarizing is really evolving and developing over the past weeks and months. And I'm confident that there will be solutions. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that I will need to travel to Frankfurt to the US consulate. Uh, that would be, let's say, a fallback option. But um, even then, I need to bring my witnesses. I mean, this is a huge, uh, huge effort. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so but, it, but I, yeah. It, but it, I guess it's typically. Say, <clears throat> sorry. Sorry, I, I was just going to say that it's typically yeah. tied to to the challenges of the you know notarizing and uh, really documented admin kind of related things. Then that that is sort mm -hmm. of a big challenge for you out there. Correct. I mean, this is um, just because here in um, in in Europe in Germany we have a different system when it comes to notarizing. Yeah, we, we don't have this kind of um, to to go to. Uh, UPS store or to banks, right? And just to to uh, to, to sign um, here in Germany, the, the, the profession of notary is something more sophisticated. I would I say, see. but yeah. but on the other hand, they work in German language normal, normally. Yeah, they they just don't. Uh, the thing is, in in USA, the notary is not responsible for the content. Mm. of the document yeah it is he is or she it does only confirm the signature and right. the, the fact that the person appeared uh, live yeah? yeah but um but in in germany the notary is responsible for the content and that is where the trouble starts yes you know what it's uh, it's very similar um I, I i do notarizing up here in canada as well so um, i'm back and forth from here in seattle but um, same thing uh, when we're notarizing things. Um, it is a little bit, um, you know, where the notary is a little bit more involved with the actual document, um, just like just like what's going on uh, out in Germany for yourself. Um, yeah. So it really depends on on I guess what country you're 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 going to be based out of and uh, working out of and figuring out that notarizing process sounds like to be a, a pr priority to figure out. Um, as uh, Sven has mentioned, the banking, open up the business from anywhere is now uh, much easier to do. Um, now, you know, what if somebody wants to travel for a lengthy amount of time or live in a different country? Uh, what would you suggest for them to be prepared for? Because I, I do know a lot mm -hmm. of investors that are looking to become fully virtual. They want to live a certain lifestyle. Um, they're, they're preparing to quit their nine to five, perhaps. Um, and this is giving them that chance to do so. And uh, you know, they want to live, um, you know, uh, and, and again, lead a different lifestyle. And obviously you're a resident in, 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 uh, you know, you're a citizen of Germany, but some people want to travel again, live a different lifestyle. What would you suggest for them to prepare for? Yeah, basically two things that we have not mentioned yet. Number one, the uh, virtual mailbox and number two, the uh, telephone line, like a, like a voice over IP service. Yep. that people can call and where you can call also um, under a U.S. phone number. Yes. Meaning when, when I'm doing phone calls, of course, I'm, I use this service and then I have a, I have a local um, area code, I have a local number, people yep. see my local number, people can call me on that number, people can text me on that number. Yep. And that makes it very handy and... Um, Nowadays, I'm, I'm impressed myself how, um, how perfect it is. I mean, and, and, without any delay, without any noise, without anything. Sure, sure. I mean, the look and feel, the, the, the experience of the, 
of these calls are um, uh, amazing. Yeah, also, I mean, the people the people don't realize that I am so far away. I mean, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Them. And and, and um, what, what yeah, is the program then, called yeah. for for the phone service? The phone service I have used um, so far called Hippo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you know it. Uh, many use Ring Central or um, some others. Um, I mean, more expensive and more professional services. For me, it was actually important to start with a low-cost approach. From really, from uh, I, I've really um, paid attention that I do not have too many and too, also too expensive uh, subscriptions. Yeah, that's why I also did not sign up for a call center. Okay. Yep. Uh, but I let everybody um, speak, uh, I mean, record on my uh, virtual, I mean, on my voice box. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and then I, I listen to the calls later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, to, to review again, if they want to get prepared to, again, live in a different country and do this remotely, uh, a virtual mailbox and uh, basically a yeah. phone system uh, that they can okay. work with. Anything else that you would suggest? Yeah. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. Sure. Um, the virtual mailbox, I mean, there are many out there. Um, I have one um, with iPostal one. Um, okay. Uh, I think they can, the, what, might, what might be important if you are abroad that this virtual mailbox can also accept checks. I mean, they can deposit checks and forward uh, incoming checks to your bank. Right. Um, because this is my only address. I mean, my only, so to say, private address in the USA is this uh, iPostal one. Now I have a second address by um, by my registered agent okay. because I have found, uh, formed the company, uh, and that one comes also with the possibility to receive letters, obviously. But um, yeah, for for a long time, um, this virtual mailbox was the um, the only. Um, official address and I was surprised myself that that is possible and acceptable that I changed my um, the address of my personal bank account to that address oh, wow. uh, to this I postal address because I mean it, it has I, this this bank account of mine was dormant a couple of years and then I started to using it again like uh, one, one, two years ago, um, but it on the checks and everything was still written my old address where I lived like ten years ago, and then I, I changed it. I, I, I filled this USPS form, um, I think fifteen nine eight or something like that, um, in order to officially register this um, I postal address, and then. Uh, Afterwards, um, I told I told the bank here this is now my address, and uh, they they, ju they ju just change it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about um, if if something sort of goes south or something sort of goes wrong yeah. with the business or your property, or whatever it may be. Um, have you ever needed to actually travel across? Um, you know, uh, head over to the to the country, uh, the United States, to deal with any of the problems or deal with anything. Uh, have you ever had to do that? No, uh, okay. fortunately not. I mean, yeah. I would love to travel, but not for unpleasant things, <laughs> like, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. That that is why in my contract um, I say clearly that um, as long as it's not paid off people cannot move in, people cannot live permanently on the property, Can, yep. people cannot build on it or make other substantial improvements. Because what somebody may call improvement, improvement is maybe uh, something that goes not so well. Yeah. Sure. So meaning, um, so of course, I, in, uh, ultimately I cannot really control it, uh, sure. what's going on. Um, I had also one, one buyer who was almost defaulting with his, his payments and I, out of curiosity, I, I checked his credit and uh, I mean, criminal record on, uh, also 
which I normally, what, what I normally don't do um, up front. Yeah. yeah. It did not look very good. Yeah. And then, then I did just send somebody to the property. Um, when, when taking other pictures, I, I just combined it and, and sent them there too. Yeah. And um, just to see, is, is there anything? Yeah. Is, uh, has, has anything happened? Uh, or is it trash or something? Whatever. What, what is the, what's the status? What's about the property? Yeah. But fortunately, everything is good. So I had one thing I, I just, I know, normally because um, I didn't mention, I, I buy everything outright, meaning. Yeah. I don't take things under contract, but I just buy cash, yep. I take ownership, and then I go there and send somebody uh, to to take pictures. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and then I see also okay uh, how how really the property looks like. Maybe it's a little bit different from the aerial picture or from the Google Street View sometimes, but not often. Yeah, I had only one case. Um, there was. A little bit of debris and uh, a couch and and a car, car, uh, car um, wheels, yeah. car tires at the neighbor lot mostly. A little bit uh, before my lot, mostly be, um, in front of the neighbor lot. But I still asked the guy to remove the, re remove it. Yeah, I just paid him a hundred dollars and he he took deposit everything to the landfill. Um, because I mean, it doesn't matter if there's somebody coming and looking uh, to to buy my property and sees that doesn't doesn't matter if it's in front of my or the neighbor's lot. It does make it does make a good uh, curb appeal. Yeah. So, that, but th this was the most um, let's say the that, that, that was the biggest issue. Other than that, I was lucky. I would say on average, um, you you are good. Uh, no, I think. The, the good thing is we don't have, let, let's say, we, I, I mean, number one, we, are, we don't deal with houses where so yeah. many things can, can be wrong. Number two, I deal, for example, with very simple, um, very rural uh, land. It has just, it just has road access, sometimes paved, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. It has mostly no city water no sewer yeah and it has sometimes power yeah and and that's it so there's really not so much that can break so changing topics here when you you know you don't have to head over uh, but you do still have to deal with um buyers and, and sellers as well and you you have to jump on the phone um how are you finding that in terms of first your hours, uh, mm -hmm. hours of operation, and then is there a set time that you operate your business and do you batch all your calls at a certain time? And how are you finding mm -hmm. sort of the cultural differences too, you know, language and mm -hmm. accents and uh, out of curiosity. Uh, I mean, so let's, let's start with the first part um, of that question. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I mean, the hours, it is automatically scheduled, so to say, because um, when I, um, come home. I mean, when when I'm done with my nine to five job, then yeah, America is still uh, in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and and then uh, so I have time until I go to bed to to do something. Um, so I normally I I would call people. Um, I mean, in in my evening, like yeah, after work, uh, and maybe even between eight o'clock and ten o'clock p.m. Mm. Um, but honestly, um, I do not need to do many phone calls. So some, yes, some call me, some ask uh, for, uh, to be called back, then I, I, I do it for sure. But um, I would say it's almost 50-50 of my sales that I do um, with, uh, with a phone call. And the other half I do only with either um, messaging uh, by by Facebook Messenger, for example, or a text message. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And and how are you finding with with accents? Are you finding that a challenge, um, or everything is pretty smooth in general? No, I I, I would say from <laughs> I don't have so much um, 
trouble with the accents. Maybe it would be different if I was active in, in Texas or some other regions. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, anyway, uh, maybe maybe it's uh, maybe it's the other way around. I'm I'm not sure if if the if the buyers and the, the, the people that I'm calling that they have more problem with my accent than I do have with theirs. Does that sort of um, sort of raise any thoughts on your buyer side? Hey, you know, Sven is not in the country. Like, why is he out in Germany? Um, does it cause any concern with your buyers? Uh, no, surprisingly not. Yeah, I, I would say. Um, I, I mean, some some do have a clue, and some some know that I am indeed out of the country. Right. Um, but I think most 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 people just think I'm I'm, I'm in the USA, and um, I mean I have a strong uh, German accent. Yes, yeah. Uh, but I, I mean there there are certainly people in the USA that that, that have that. Right, 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 right. So um, um, yeah, no, I'm typically I I telling people, um, for example, if somebody asks, can we meet? Can we? write uh, paperwork in, in person can we can we meet at the property and so on yeah i i tell them i'm out of state which is not a lie yeah uh, but also not 100 percent the truth i mean i'm out <laughs> of country uh, but i tell them i'm out of state yeah and that's why i cannot meet them in person and most most people just uh, understand and, and move on yeah right on right on Okay, Sven. Well, thanks again for, for sharing, you know, how you operate your business out of the country. I know um, a lot of people want to do that or are on that path of, of leaving uh, their job and want to sort of lead a lifestyle where they can travel and be remote. And this is a ex clear example of that. Obviously, I, you're doing this successfully out of the country now. Um, did I miss anything that you want to share in terms of running your land investing or real estate investing business uh, out of the country that I missed? Yeah, maybe one thing that I would like to um, <clears throat> like to tell um, others, like from Germany, it doesn't matter, or from Europe, whoever, um, try to um, do some some sort of proof of concept. I mean, try to do your first deal um, alone and by yourself. Uh, so, so that you know I can do it. Mm -hmm. Don't rely too much, too early on coaches and um, and others in the USA because the temptation, especially for us, is there uh, th that we think we cannot do it from here. In fact, we can do it. And in order to understand the full process, we should do all the steps ourselves first. Yeah, for example, I made my first deal. I sold my first property before going on to this group coaching. And then, of course, the group coaching still told me a lot, taught, taught me a lot, but um, uh, that, that is my, my takeaway because I have others seen complaining um, that and too, too much relying on, uh, on coaches and then they, they were frustrated because they, they, couldn't, um, they couldn't do it and they thought, they thought it doesn't work for me and so on. So that that's my um, that's yeah my no I, I I really like what you're saying here in terms of you know figuring things out for yourself and being resourceful because you know as I continue to speak to a lot of different you know investors from those that are just getting started to those that are very successful doing a lot of properties have a lot of properties on terms or whatever it may be I find that everybody runs their business very differently. Um, so figuring that out and and that's sort of the journey about being an entrepreneur is. Um, figuring out your own path and, and what works for you because we all have different skill sets. We're all different. Uh, we're just different in general. So we have to figure out how to apply ourselves and, and, and then um, getting assistance or help afterwards um, can apply a lot better uh, afterwards. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying there, Sven. Anyway, Sven, yes. thanks again for coming on the show. Um, and thanks again for all pleasure. your questions. Sorry? It was a pleasure. Yes. There's a little bit of a delay. I can see that. Um, okay. But anyways, thanks again for coming on the show, Sven. And uh, everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, if you wanted to chat with myself or Sven, we're inside the REI Conversion Community Facebook group. Um, we're there. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys around. Thanks again for listening.
Before you stop this podcast or head to the next episode, I want to personally thank you for listening to this episode of the REI Conversion Podcast. If you found this helpful, we'd greatly appreciate an awesome review and rating on whichever platform you're listening to this on. And if you have two minutes and wanted to step it up even more and help others, feel free to share this in other Facebook groups or pages or any communities giving others a heads up of the REI Conversion Podcast or this specific episode that may help them on their investing journey. Once again, thanks very much for listening and catch you on our next episode.